Hi, this is Peter Jekyll from Turn On Dynamics, and again today what we're talking about is Microsoft Dynamics AX to D365 upgrades. Today what we want to talk about is how the upgrade path for D365 is significantly different than what we've seen in the AX world before. So let's take a look. What we typically see with an AX upgrade is what I call a linear process, right? You have version A of your AX software and you want to upgrade to version B. So typically your considerations were cost and time to upgrade. Very, very straightforward process. When we came to the upgrades from AX to D365, things kind of changed dramatically with multiple options that we hadn't anticipated up front. So the first thing that I found that was surprising was I thought that going from, you know, whatever version you had of AX to D365, was going to be a linear upgrade, just like uh, back in the old days when we were just uh, upgrading from one version of AX to the other. The thing that surprised me is how many folks wanted to look at these two different options right off the uh, get-go. They wanted to look not only at the cloud version, which I thought was going to be the obvious uh, you know, selection for everybody, versus on-premise. Now, that analysis between cloud and on-premise has a lot of different questions uh, that need to be answered. There are technical questions, there are functional questions, et cetera. So again, what I thought was that everyone going from AX to D365 was automatically gonna be in default mode and go in the cloud route. Surprising, again, the number of folks that wanted to look at the cloud versus the on-premise version. So that was the first thing. The next major surprise that we ran into was that when people finished analyzing this option here is they looked at something that I completely and totally did not expect. What folks did was they went a totally alternate route, what I call the stabilization route. Now, what does that mean? What that means is even companies that had the resources and the money to pursue either this cloud upgrade or this on-premise upgrade from AX to D365, what they decided was that the current cost and technology that was available was too expensive and too untr untried and untrue for them to go down this route. What they decided to do instead was stabilize on the latest and greatest version of AX, which is AXR3. So the decision was not to upgrade at all to D365, but rather to upgrade their current version of AX and stabilize it on the latest and greatest version of AX, which is R3. A lot of advantages to this. Uh, what they could do here, the thought process was, let's stabilize from a standpoint of Perhaps in our old version of AX, we had multiple uh, modifications that were no longer needed. So let's uh, get rid of those and use the software as vanilla as possible out of the box here. The other thought process was, let's allow this upgrade from AX to D365 process, let's allow the technology and the knowledge to catch up with us so that the cost and the time investment here was lower. So that was, that was a very interesting uh, that was a very interesting result of uh, working with folks on these upgrades that we did not expect. Now the other the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting was uh, companies that decided on a stabilization, they also had this option of, hey, what are we going to do? Are we going to stabilize on premise with our existing hardware? Or are we going to do an upgrade to our hardware? because the requirements of R3 were greater? Or are we going to do a private cloud by taking our existing AX solution, moving it to R3, but moving it to a cloud either uh, in our own private cloud or using a third party cloud provider So that the net result was, 
we're still in the cloud, and perhaps that was our goal to get, because we have some aging infrastructure, um, or our executive team no longer wanted us to be on premise and we wanted to move to the cloud. And when this cloud move became cost prohibitive or technology prohibitive, then this move here, stabilizing on AXR3 and installing on our own private cloud or a third party cloud was then the solution. Now, the last thing that we have to take a look at here is, this, is the following decision. When we do one of these upgrades, regardless of where we do these upgrades, directly from here to here or here to here, there is a decision of are we going to A, do an actual upgrade, sorry, or B, a reinstall. So, what we found out was there are a lot of existing versions of AX that can't do an immediate upgrade from here to there or from here to there. So the discussion becomes, do we do a multi-stop upgrade or do we do a re-implementation or a reinstall? Interestingly enough, the reinstall may be a great solution for people that have taken their existing software and modified it too heavily where the cost to do an upgrade uh, far exceeds the benefits. So from the old you know, upgrade path uh, from AX to, you know, another version of AX. Very simple, very straightforward, cost uh, and time to do that. Now, a much more complex set of issues that we have to deal with. And if you're contemplating this or you're in the middle of this and you have questions, please contact us. We've got a lot more information behind the scenes on here.